In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to do multiple regression uh, as a substitute. It's not really a substitute, but a different way of doing analysis of covariance. Analysis of covariance is a, uh, is a statistical technique that's uh, found in SPSS and other kinds of uh, advanced statistical programs. But we can get exactly the same answer using Excel. And in this case, we want to do statistics on a randomized clinical trial where there is a pretest and a post-test, and there are two or more treatment groups. Now, we will, um, when the, the main difference between using analysis of variance in a SPSS package and multiple regression in Excel is that uh, when we talk about groups, especially when we talk about more than two groups, uh, we have a problem because in this example, this is our ortho K data, and we had three, uh, we had two lens types, but we actually divided them into three groups. There's um, a lens type for um, uh, one, which is for a spheric, and then we have um, we have lens type two for a a group that fits well to or that didn't grow rather, and group three, which was a group that a spherical lens group that their myopia was not controlled at all. So let's, so we can't have a variable that's groups nominal that's one, two, three, because that just says two is better than one and three is or different. It, it gives an order that's just not there. One, two, and three, these are nominal. There is no order. Uh, nominal meaning they're different groups. And so we have to create what are called dummy variables. And what we're going to do is we're going to take, so we're going to take, create two dummy variables. We have three groups, and with three groups you need to create two dummy variables because each dummy variable can have a value of one or zero, one or zero, and if it's neither one, it's zero, zero. So um, let's just put in zeros all the way down. Oops, I got one in first. Zero, zero. All right, now we filled everything in. So group one here is zero, zero. When we get down to a two right here, we're going to make that a one. And then we're going to copy that one all the way down to group three. So if it's if it's if it's lens type two, it's a one for spherical one and it's a two for spherical two. You know what? I'm going to change that name, Spherical 2, Spherical 3. That might be a little less confusing. I'm not sure. Okay, now we're at 3. So we're going to make Spherical 3 a 1. And then copy the rest of them. So if it's group three, it's a zero one. If it's group two, it's a one zero. And if it's group one, it's a zero zero. So we have two dummy variables. Now, instead of our regression putting in just one variable, we need to put in two. All right, and then next thing I'm going to do 
I'm going to take these two columns. I'm going to copy them. I'm going to insert them right here. I do this trick. Whoops, did that get them all? I'm doing that because of the requirement for the multiple regression program. Yeah, 23.72. All right. So, um, so to do multiple regression, we go to data, and then you need to add in data analysis, this little add-in program. And there are instructions how to do this separate from this. And let's, um, in fact, I think I'll put the instructions for Mac users, well, actually, I think it's for both, in the uh, description below. So here's data analysis. And this has a bunch of different functions. We're going to use the regression. And here it, has, it asks to input the Y range. Now, the Y range is the post um, the post analysis, the, the post score. So remember, we have a pre and a post and a treatment. So the Y values, in this case, we're measuring axial length at baseline and axial length at, uh, at follow-up. And so we are going to do um, the Y range is, is axial length at follow-up. I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom. We have 359, well, some number of observations. Now we're going to go to the X range. Now, the X range, this is where we moved those guys over because what we have to do is we have to cover both the dummy variables. So these are sphere 2 and 3, sphere spherical good and bad, and then we have the baseline. And we'll mark that. It also goes down to 360. And then it says, OK, where do you want to Do you want to put it on this sheet? Do you want to do it on a new worksheet? And let's do it on a new worksheet. There are some other options we can do, but we're not going to mess with that right now. To say OK. And we get these results that are, have way too many digits. We're going to cut those down. And same way up here. And up here. And so our multiple are using that information, the treatments, the lens type, um, our, and the pre-scores. Our correlation was 0.92. The R squared, the amount of variance that our model accounted for, was 86%, which is really quite a bit. That was a, it's a good fitting model. Now, um, we look here. And these variables, well, let's see, were they significant? Here's our p-value. Yes, this first variable, which is sphere um, controlled growth, or let's just call it oops, sphere good. And this was the lens as the lens that was bad. We'll call that sphere bad. And this was axial length at baseline. And when we look over at our t values here, they give us a nice incremental uh, understanding of how important this variable was. 28, a T of 28, that means that um, the probability 
of finding this statistic of 28.7 given that there is no effect of spherical bad is a really small number. The same way, so we reject the null hypothesis that the spherical bad was not significant. Now, what's it significant from? And this coefficient is significant from zero, but if we remember when we were creating our, our dummy variables, zero is the reference to aspheric. So, so spherical bad is very, very different from the uh, aspheric lens. But for this other subset of, of uh, patients, the spherical good, those subjects were actually uh, not different from aspherical people. And so uh, we're not going into how we defined good and bad, but I can tell you that by looking at the character, baseline characteristics of the spherical subjects, we could almost perfectly predict whether their, their, um, their eyes would grow over five years wearing this lens. And then also we have the baseline axial length that also uh, covered a very significant part. We rejected it. That's 43 standard error units away from um, normal. Remember, kind of plus or minus two says things are, are normal. This is 43. That's way, way out there. So basically, that's how you do multiple regression for a, uh, as a simulation of an analysis of covariance when you have three groups. If you have more than three groups, then you just create more dummy variables. You have to pick one as a reference, and then you just, uh, everybody's compared to that reference. We can, we just have one group, like lens type, there's just zero and one. We've already got our dummy variable. We don't have to create it. Okay, that's how you do it.